to the video. Today we have the Outra Solstice. Outra sent me out a pair of these. And Outra also did send me out a pair of these four years ago. Almost four years ago. It's a little bit spooky. Almost four years ago to the day I received my first pair of Outra Paradigms. This is the first and only pair I've ever had. It's still going strong. Outra gave me a pair of Solstice, which is more of a everyday sort of shoe, which I use this for everyday, but the Solstice, in my opinion, I worked in footwear for a long, long time. I've sold thousands of pairs of running shoes. Um, Outra is the only brand I wear. Yes, they give me free shoes, but I just fucking love their product, and I don't wear their shoes because they give them to me free. I've also bought Outras before, but I just, I rate them. So anyway, they sent me out there, said, Harley, can you do a review video, share us what your thoughts. I, I love what I do love about them, and what I don't like about them. I... Love the upper, it feels very comfortable. Um, it feels like a real all day shoe, marathon shoe, ultra marathon shoe upper. I personally wouldn't run a marathon in these. It's not enough cushioning for me. I'm a 247, 248 marathoner. I prefer something a bit more cushioning, cushion for the pushing. So for me, these would be more my park run 5K shoe. So you see me a park run, I'm gonna be wearing these. I'm gonna be wearing these. Um, that, these are good for park run, but they're a little bit heavier and a bit more cushioning. I don't need that much cushioning for, for a 5K personally. If you do, then it's fine. But for the marathon, the cushioning really helps because it delays the fatigue metabolites and all that smash on the, on the pavement. These, though, weight-wise, I don't have any scales on me. They're definitely a little bit lighter. All right? So they give it more of a race feel uh, if you're pushing those faster 5K times. The upper I do like, it does feel very seamless durability-wise. Well, time will tell, but the, this durability upper has been really good. There's like a little micro hole on the side, but this is you know, four years of heavy usage, still going strong. Uh, so the sole feels it's more of a firm ride. It's definitely not the max cushion plush of the Paradigm, which I'd rate highly. So this is a great one to have in my rotation. This is my 5K shoe. This is my 5K shoe. This is my speed work shoe. Not that I do speed work. Um, but one day if I do do speed work, I'll be using this. <laughs> I've been saying that for like 15, 20 years, I'll do speed work one day. But this is a 5k shoe for sure, so I'll be looking forward to setting some park run PRs. I did have the Outra one before this, which I gave away in Thailand, it was pretty well worn, not much cushioning left, so I gave it away in Thailand. Uh, this is going to replace that. It does feel, the upper feels a bit nicer on the foot, and I think Outra is really paying attention to its uh, requests. It, it just does, it looks a little bit more stylish as well, it looks like a Nike Free which is a very popular shoe, the Nike Free. But those Nike Free's, they've got hardly any cushioning, there's not heel drop, they're narrow as, so that not, for, for me, the Nike Free is purely a fashion shoe. It's purely a fashion shoe. And let's be honest, Nike shoes are fashion shoes, they're not high performance shoes. Even the ones on the, the world record marathoners, they could make them a wider toe box. You know, they're still stuck in that narrow, aesthetic, Air Max sort of look. But Outra, boom, wide toe box. So your foot can splay. That's extra performance there. Doesn't matter if you're an EP or not. When your foot can land and splay, so it could be better control, better cushioning, better pronation, better, better takeoff. Try them and let you know what I think. First time you wear outras, they're like, this feels fucking awkward. They're sloppy and they're loose, almost feels like. But then I'll go back to my old Brooks or a Nike or an Astic shoe and go, fuck, these are so cramped. I can't wear these anymore. You know, so you, you get that, you get that move. It's like a good relationship. And you've had a good relationship, people are really looking after you, caring for you, doing what you really love and ticking your boxes. It's like, this is a bit weird. This is a bit weird. Then maybe you go back or have a break and it's like, actually, I like that. I don't like the old stuff anymore. So, Outra's the only shoe that I have. If you see me on the street, I'm going to wear my cycling shoes or I'm going to wear Outra's. There's no mid midway for me. I don't even have any dress shoes, but Outra do do dress shoes. This might sound like a little sponsored video, but it's not. I've done... Um, I swear shit is, I guess, but, you know, I'll only recommend or only accept things that I'll use myself. And I'm not the person who's bought, you can't just give me 10 grand or 20 grand or 50 grand and say, hey, Harley, promote this. You know, unless I believe in it, unless I buy my own money and use it, then, I'm, then I'll back it. Otherwise, I'm not interested. I'm not Casey Neistat. I can't be bought. I'm not a YouTube hooker. Not that there's wrong with that, but a lot of people do that and they're not transparent about it. So in case you thought this is just a bias of review because the Outra give me free product, it's not. I like to keep my shoes, you know, I like to wear shit out, man. You know, I'm not one of those person who's just like, my shoes are dirty, give me a free pair. I like to wear stuff beyond its product life cycle. Like, look at this. I'm not sure if you can see this in the camera. These shoes are thrashed, but they're still going strong, you know. 
if Ouch said, hey, you know, we'll give you another pair of shoes, use a 4.0, then I'll give these to someone who could use them in Thailand or Philippines. I can't throw anything into landfill. I just can't do that. It's like, I don't know, I collect all my stuff and take it to Thailand or Philippines every year and give it away. I just can't throw nothing out. It's like, there's people out there who don't have any you know, nice clothing or footwear. There's people who never, ever in their life experience the, what, the joy of actually having a good pair of shoes. So why throw your shoes into landfill? Next holiday you go, bring your shoes and just leave them in the hotel. The hotel cleaners will just pop them up. You know, just give them away. But before you go, just put them in someone else's room with a stash them somewhere. Someone else will grab them in Asia. And they'll use them. You know? And they'll enjoy them. They'll appreciate them. Anyway, I'm digressing from the, the review there. I like the upper, I like the colours, I like the feel. It's a fast, responsive shoe. Good toe box. Laces look pretty good. And uh, I like the colourway as well. So there we go. That's my outro at Solstice review. It feels a little bit more cushioning than the one. This cushioning feels a bit more durable. Um, the sock liner, just a pretty standard outro, wide toe box. And that's another thing you can do is you can put your foot against your, look at that. See that? If that was a Nike. It'd be spilling over the side. So that's a good say, good way to test your shoes out. Is like, you know, or you can even put your foot on top of your shoe. So look at that. So see that? That's a fucking proper shoe. That's a proper shoe. You know, when I worked in the football industry, like, we didn't have this sort of shoes. It was like, you just got a crampy little foot, like a ballet, Asics, Keanos, or whatever. That's a fucking proper shoe. So outro, I get my vote every time. The first outros were hard and hideous looking. But these new ouches, last four years, fucking game changes. Let's take some questions from the chat. We'll keep them, try and keep them running specific. If you have any running questions, I'll be here for a few more minutes and then I've got to head, oops, I'll swap the camera view around. Let's have a look-see um, on some of the questions here. How much are the ouches? Let's, I don't really like giving prices because you might live in Pakistan, you might live in Thailand, you might live in Russia. So. Go to your local outdoor shop or website and you get the pricing there. So, you know. Um, how long till the jersey is shipped to UK? Uh, if you haven't got a tracking order, you should get it very soon. You should get it very soon. I'll do it. I'll get, I'll get I'll finish those tracking orders today. Thanks for the reminder. Thanks for the reminder. Um, the Vegan Festival in Adelaide this weekend, I may or may not be there. Depends if I'm in Adelaide or not. I'm not sure exactly. I'm in Sydney right now. I'm in Sydney right now. All right, so some running questions. How much do I weigh? About last night, I weighed myself 73 kilos. How was the vegan festival? That wasn't a vegan festival yesterday. That was uh, the Sydney Vegan Market. The Sydney Vegan Market. It's pretty cool. Uh, is it leather on the upper? There's no leather in these shoes. This is all synthetic. You know? This is all synthetic. It's all synthetic. All synthetic. All synthetic. Um... Training for an ultra 50k thoughts on shoes, Billy Johnstone. Billy, I would recommend if you're not using ouchers already. Now, again, this sounds really sales and sponsored, but honestly, man, try the ouchers. Don't go 100% ouchers because you, you know, the zero drop may trigger your Achilles. It, maybe, it didn't for me, but some people it does. So put the ouchers in your rotation and let your body adapt to that zero drop feel. Zero drop means from heel to forefoot, it's flat. It's even like a barefoot shoe, all right? So the benefits of barefoot, wide toe box, zero drop, so natural running gait, natural running form, which is better, feel, you feel better to run, less injury, more speed for the same effort, better running economy, and you get that max cushion. So for the 50K Ultra, I'd recommend something like a Ultra Olympus, something like that, some max cushion shit. So 50K is a long way on the legs, downhills, smashing your legs, all right, so... Having that max cushion would be great. So I'd recommend get a pair of Outro Olympus, go local Outro dealer, try them on. It can be hard though if you're in Australia because there's not many stockers here. So it can be hard to get the sizing in the field, but trust me, it's fucking worth it if you pursue it. It's worth it to pursue it. So shoe-wise, I would definitely recommend um, you know, get some good ones, some Outros. What is better, running or riding? I think riding because of my knees. I reckon do both. You know, If you're under maybe 80 kilos or so, then you can do both. But ease into the running. Start with just walking, little jogs. And have some max cushion shoes to start with. That'll help you a lot. Don't run in Nikes or Asics or anything like that. They're fucking terrible, man. And trust me, I can say from as experienced as a runner, as a shoe salesperson, as a shoe geek, I'm a shoe tech geek, and as a coach, all these Nikes, New Balance, Asics, they're fucking rubbish. They're fucking rubbish, man. I wish all those companies would do this sort of toe box, zero drop. 
It's how shoes are meant to be made. This whole skinny last thing is just to meet the consumer's expectation. I'm all about pragmatic footwear that enhances your performance. It's free speed. Right. These are the best shoes in the market. Outro. Nothing comes close. I mean, it would be really cool to see Nike and everyone else doing it. Making actually proper fucking shoes. Instead of this fashion shit that robs your performance. I'm not going to do all the training and the nutrition and the mental work and stuff like that to lose performance because my footwear is fashion oriented versus pragmatic function oriented. Maybe I'm crazy, but that's me. I'm, I'm, there's no way I'm going to use a product anymore. I'm too old for shitty product. This doesn't work properly. Um, so hopefully that's it. There's a little rant there, but just yeah, think about it. Like, fuck, I even see pro riders because they don't have a, they don't have a choice. Their sponsor says you use this. I have a choice. You know, I, I can recommend or use whatever I want. It's not because I'm getting paid to do it, but I'm locked into this thing. It's like no, it's like no. What outro would be good for trail running? Uh, Marky Mark says I would recommend the outro Olympus. Check that out, outro Olympus. Bretsky went 242 in a pair of outros today. What was that, Bretsky? Where was that? That's good. Um, I better get them because I have Nike. Nike, sh Nike shoes. I, I love Nike shoes. Nike shoes, they were iconic when I was a teenager. The Air Maxes and the Triaxes and all the STs and the Stabs and the Structures and all that stuff. Pegasus, but really they, they were just iconic because that was Nike back in the day. The Avatar, they market a lot of dope athletes. They got huge popularity as a status item. And then they had some really cool colors and designs. But in terms of functionality, not even come close to uh, not even coming close to a um, outro performance in 2018. 242 in Toronto was cold as balls. I've got to get to Thailand. Good work, bro. That's sick. That's sick. So Chase uses the Lone Peak outro for trail running. Lone Peak. Um, Olympus has huge stack height. Yeah, for sure. That's why you want to get used to it. So the extra stack height can make you a little bit wobbly on certain trails, but the cushioning. It's like a full suspension mountain bike. You know, you just, you, you'll just be able to go longer and stay stronger because you'll have less fatigue metabolites because your legs won't get as mashed up. Escalante is a solid comfort speed shoe, yeah. Thailand or the Philippines, depends on what you want. Um, Ivan says, tips on more traffic to your YouTube channel. Um, more more videos, Ivan, more videos. Ivan, I asked that in the Facebook group as well. Maybe you didn't, I didn't even get back to it. Just I've got, I'm getting a new MacBook today. So just bear with us. I've got some little uh, some little issues here. All right, so let's let's get some more running questions. What about the Escalante? Escalante is also a shoe that I rate. The Outra Escalante. Outra Escalante would be between for me the Paradigm Max cushion, be in the middle there. For me, upper end cushioning. The Escalante feels really good. If for me, it reminds me of the 1994 Nike Air Mariah, which had a full length. Uh, air unit in a encapsulated midsole with a polyurethane midsole and that shoe fuck I, I ran marathons in that it was super light but it was really narrow you know and the Escalante when I first wore the Escalante in a shop in Adelaide this year I was like wow this is like a Nike Air Mariah you know but the Air Mariah was like a fantastic shoe it's an iconic shoe back in its day it was an iconic shoe back in its day so yeah um, if you're religious with Thailand or the Philippines you go go to both and find out. Go to both what you find out. Uh, I have the Salomon Trail. I just want to keep this. I'm not to be rude, but I want to keep this uh, this video trying to keep it running based for my runners out there. Uh, I've got the Salomon Trail. I find them way too. Yeah, the Salomon. You know what I mean? They got some great technology, but what's up with that fucking narrow, performance robbing shape? It's crazy. It's really really sad. It's really really sad. All right. Um, we'll do two more questions and I'm going to hit the streets. I'm going to hit the streets. Eddie says, even some outras are too narrow midfoot. Hmm. I think for me, the most important part of the shoe is, for me, is it supports you around here, but it lets your foot splay. Because this part of your foot, it doesn't really splay that much on impact. But your toes, boom, you know, it does. So the... The midfoot bit, I like a firm, I like a encapsulated midfoot. It wraps around there. My foot feels pretty firm. But I like having that toe box that can splay. I've worn, I've owned probably hundreds of shoes in my lifetime. And I've worn a lot more. Because when I worked in the running store, I would try on the shoes all the time. So I could give the consumer, the customer, 
my honest feedback and opinion. If I wanted a cushion shoe, or a stable shoe, or a light shoe, or a heavy shoe, or a clunky shoe, or whatever, I could I'd try the shoes on, I'd wear them around, and I could give them my honest opinion. So I've tried on so many shoes, and uh, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's really, really good to just try stuff out. Um, thoughts and math of turn running. There's some good points in there. Some good points in there. Should I refuel or rehydrate after a long run? No, the best thing to do, Chase, is don't eat and don't drink before, during, or after training. <laughs> the best place to be in is ketosis and dry fasting. Just for anyone who couldn't tell I was being sarcastic, no. I like to drink a cup of water before I go out for a run, have a little, you know, a little piece of fruit. Generally, I'm generally back in 10 minutes or less than an hour, and then I'll have my more water, 500 mils to a litre, and then have some sort of carbohydrate-rich breakfast. Always eat on long runs. Anything over 40 minutes, bring some food with you. Even if it's just sugar water, you know. And always eat and drink after your run. Just drink your water first, have a water bottle, have some sugars, and then get to you know, get in there. Is kinder body natty? Anybody ain't natty. <laughs> um, all right, so Marky Marks saying, should I wear my Hocker 1-1 one -one or the Shitty Salomon next weekend at Ragnar Trail event? I would wear uh, whatever you find the most comfortable, the most cushioning. You know, the Hockers do have that cushioning. I think Hockers were the first one to have the really that max midsole. That was, that was really good. Mike Arnston introduced me to Hockers back in 2011. I was like, wow, this, is, this makes sense. So I would go the Hockers in that situation. I'll get the hockers in that situation because the Salomon, I'm not sure how much cushioning they got. And if you're doing an ultra, then you want to have cushioning. You want to have some cushioning. Thailand or Philippines for price? Um, it depends on your budget. I would say Philippines, they're very similar because Philistines, Philippines, the accommodation is more expensive, but the food's cheaper. So, yeah. Be a go to decide, decide for yourself. Go there. Go there. Go do both. If you have to choose between both destinations, you know, go do both, and then you'll be solid that you've sold yourself in the right option there. All right. Lionel Sanders needs to carb up. That's, yeah, that's, I'm not sure what he's doing, Lionel Sanders. Does running have any benefits for cycling? I find running is good for bone density. I find running just makes my legs feel a bit strong on the bike. I feel running embraces my natural. Uh, ability on the bike. I do rate running, you know. I've done plenty of videos about it. So yeah, you know, you want to um, you want to do some bit of running every, each week. But start with walking. Start with walking, then jog. All right. I've got plenty of uh, videos about running tips and stuff like that. The outro vanish. They seem to be run large in other outages. You're always going to try a shoe on. You know, I'm, I've got an eleven and a half in these, and these are elevens. I think these elevens, eleven and a half. I can't even remember now. The tags worn off. But I always have at least a thumb between the tip of my toe, biggest toe, longest toe, and the end of the shoe. So there. All right, one more question. I should do two more questions. What's the best food for weight loss? It's not about a food, it's more about a lifestyle. We're talking about food, then also the best food for weight loss would be white rice and fruit and sugars. The best foods for weight loss are high carb, low fat, plant foods, vegan foods, sugar, white rice, bananas, fruits, any fruit you like, sweet fruit. Why white rice? Because it just digests really good. It tastes really good when you mix a bit of soy sauce and it just absorbs the flavors of what you're eating. It gives you energy, it helps restore muscle glycogen. It's got a great glycemic load index and it keeps you slim and it's good and it's easy to get, it's cheap to make and it's fast to make. Put rice in the rice cooker here and then boom, do your thing. Give your girlfriend a massage or your boyfriend or whatever and you're good to go. So rice is really good. If you like brown rice, then you like brown rice. I prefer white rice. I know Natasha prefers white rice. So yeah. Um, so yeah. Pilgrim's Path in Chiang Mai. Uh, Nike Flywire XC racing shoes. I like the Nike designs and stuff, but man, the, the, this, the narrowness. I'm just like, oh my God. You know? Occasionally I try on a pair of Nike shoes for nostalgic reasons, and I'm just like, oh man. He's a shocker. He's a shocker. So, yeah. Um, anyway, I'll see you again soon. Thanks for all the comments and questions. I do have a new Instagram account. Reminds me, where is my phone? My Instagram did get deleted. All right, so go to Duran Riders. Just type in Duran Riders Instagram. That's my new account. Um, old one's gone. Done. 
SJW Trolls took it out. So if you're trying to find my Instagram stories, I'm posting so much on Instagram at the moment uh, and a lot more today. So get on there, follow me on Instagram, Durian Riders. I've got about 400 followers and I'm just starting up again, starting up. So I will make you another video today and we'll see you again. Thanks for all the support. Peace, gang. And if you want these jerseys, there's a few left at DurianRiders.com. But uh, yeah, sold out really quick. Thanks for the support again, gang. I'm going to go into town now in Sydney and uh, get myself a new MacBook. First world problems.